Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large scale distributed systems. Well, I am really excited about this week's episode of the Distributed Data Show. This is Jeff Carpenter, and I am here with Robin Schumacher. Hey, Jeff. How are you? <laughs> and uh, we have brought you on today to talk about a very exciting new release for DataStacks Enterprise, DSE 6, long awaited, long rumored, finally available now. So I want to ask you all kinds of questions about DSE 6, how it came to be, what's in it, and so on. But I would like to give you the opportunity to make a proper introduction for yourself, first of all. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about your background? Sure. So uh, I am SVP of products here at DataStacks, which means I oversee the product management, the documentation, and the developer relations teams. And I will have been here at DataStacks, what, probably seven years this coming July. So I think uh, I was employee 25 or 30 or something along those lines way back in 2011 when I joined. And prior to that, I have been a database guy for literally 30 years. So uh, it's a good chance that I have worked with most every major database that's out there in one form or another as a database administrator. Oracle, SQL Server, Sybase, DB2, uh, Teradata, MySQL, Postgres, um, all of those I've dealt with. And uh, so I was a DBA for quite a while and then got into making software uh, for DBAs and database developers. I uh, started the product team up and ran the product line at a company called Embarcadero Technologies that makes tools for database developers. We went public in uh, 2000 and uh, went on from there to start up the product team at MySQL. So if there's any viewers who are using MySQL, uh, I was the person who headed up the enterprise product, uh, built the product team up, and just as Oracle was closing on MySQL, I went over to a Postgres company called Enterprise DB, was doing the exact same thing there, getting the product team going, uh, creating differentiation between open source and commercial product. Uh, when my good friend Billy Bosworth was tapped to be CEO here, uh, he and I have worked together for 20 some odd years. This is our fifth company together and tapped me on the shoulder to come here. And it has been a, uh, a great ride so far. That's awesome. And I, and I wanted our, to make sure our audience um, just gets to hear a little bit of that depth of background. You've definitely been there, done that, uh, seen it all. And you have watched uh, you know, our product here at DataStax really mature from its, its beginning stages uh, and really adding on a lot of the enterprise features that uh, you know, we would come to expect in an enterprise grade database. And so this, this feels like a major milestone in terms of you know, having arrived at a new level of maturity. So uh, definitely excited to you know, hear a little bit behind the scenes about what went into that. So I wanna dive right into it. What are some of the overarching product strategies that went into DSE 6? Like what, what's the main objective here with this release? Sure. So over the past six to seven years, what we have been doing is building an enterprise data platform on top of proven open source technology, uh, Apache Cassandra, Apache Spark, Solar, uh, things like that. And during that time period, we have done a lot of investment and worked with the open source communities to really build up Cassandra to where it is today, which is really one of the top two leading NoSQL platforms out there. and I think arguably the only one that is built from the ground up for heavy lifting uh, distributed database uh, scenarios and use cases. Uh, I think um, there's, there's really no one out there that would deny that. Uh, when it comes to distributing your data, ensuring that you never go down, having predictable linear scale performance, uh, Cassandra is it. And so that's what we've been doing over these past six or so years. So we've been building up Cassandra on the open source side and then building a commercial enterprise platform on the other. And now we've kind of reached a milestone with DSC 6 where we've begun to focus on a number of other objectives now that, that DS, DataStacks Enterprise is where it is and Cassandra has reached a level of maturity in the open source community. And so really we've got three objectives that we're looking at long term and when i mean long term probably in the next three or so years that have really shaped and molded uh, dsc6 as well as the versions that will be coming right after 
Um, the first being an emphasis now of reprioritization of our development efforts so that our commercial platform, Daystex Enterprise, is really the priority versus in past years having that focus be on open source. And as I mentioned, we've worked really hard with the open source community to get Cassandra where it is today. And because it's reached a uh, really strong and, and uh, stable, uh, mature place in the market, we now feel comfortable to relax a number of the guidelines we've used internally that have held us back in terms of um, focusing on Datastax Enterprise and, and retaining functionality we developed for Datastax Enterprise. So the first objective really is this, this new emphasis that we're placing on Datastax Enterprise. The second involves simplicity. And so again, over these years, we have put a large a set of large uh, building blocks in place in the platform, advanced security, integrated analytics, integrated search and memory, graph database, multi-model functionality. And now, we, now that we have these in place, we're beginning to uh, polish them, if you will, make them easier to use, simpler for our customers to utilize in their daily um, work, whether they're developers or administrators or operators. And our cloud strategy, which I think we'll talk about in a little bit, factors into that as well. So simplicity is really the second goal that we have. And then the third <clears throat> is our unification or unified platform objective. Um, as I just mentioned, we have integrated analytics, integrated search, all these other pieces that work very, very well today. But what we're looking at doing now is going from an integrated platform to one that is more unified, where we're beginning to actually bake these pieces of functionality deeper into our distribution of Cassandra, so that when you download and install Datastax Enterprise and push the start button, all of this functionality will be available, always on um, there, versus some of the secondary work configuration maybe that you have to do today to enable analytics or search. And so those three objectives, the, the emphasis now on the commercial platform, uh, the simplification of the platform, and the unification of the platform are really is, is what's driven what we've done in six and the releases that are soon to follow. Excellent. Okay, so you've definitely given me a roadmap there that I'm going to follow and walk right down that road. So um, let's talk about each of those points. Now, in terms of kind of a, a distinctiveness between DSE 6 and Cassandra, you mentioned that, it's, that there's a little bit of a, a, a emphasis and divergence between uh, what's in DataSax Enterprise and open source Cassandra. Is that something that you can talk to a little bit? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, um, we have been piloting the ship, as it were, with a set of guidelines that I helped develop when I was at MySQL and also at, at Postgres company that helped us determine what we give back to open source and what we have retained for paying customers. Um, now we're relaxing those guidelines. And so in the past, we had mandates that said, open source Cassandra would never run slower than Datastax Enterprise. Even though we put some performance optimizations as such into the platform, into the DSE platform, they were never really out of the box in a sense. Um, so we had mandates such as that, that uh, open source Cassandra would never scale less than DSE, would never replicate differently or, or in less advanced fashion. And that's changed. With DSE 6, uh, what you're going to find is out of the box, Datastax Enterprise will run faster than open source Cassandra. Uh, okay. uh, it will scale better. It will replicate in more advanced fashion. And so some practical examples of this um, first would be a set of optimizations and utilities that we've included in version six uh, that we've labeled DSE advanced performance. And advanced performance is targeting um, re applications that really require the utmost in speed um, and don't require any changes to any ex existing application code or, or setup or anything else that you've done so that when you download and install six, just push the start button. It's going to out of the box give you round a 2x uh, improvement in both read and write performance without you having to do anything. And we've got use cases where we're actually seeing even greater increases in speed. So um, this was a huge rewrite that our development team worked on. Um, very proud of uh, the work that they've done. We've got some performance tests and benchmark papers that we'll uh, be putting on our website that you can download and take a look at, and viewers can look at and, and see exactly what we've done there. So that's one of the things that's under the, DS, uh, the DSE Advanced Performance umbrella. Another being a brand new bulk loader. 
that we have added. So uh, one of the requests we've gotten over the years has been something that exceeded the capabilities of the SS table loader, the copy command that we've got with CQL, and really more mirrored what people have used in their relational environments like SQL loader for Oracle, BCP for SQL Server, or something like that. And that's exactly what the DSE bulk loader is. It allows people to really push data into the DSE platform and unload it in a much more simple, elegant, and much more performant way than the prior utilities. And so our internal tests are showing a 4x actual improvement in both moving data into, inserting data into the platform, and then unloading and getting it out and pushing it to perhaps other um, targets within the enterprise. So that's a second item. And then a third is our DSC analytics, which utilizes Apache Spark for the very first time. Again, we have done all the open source work to connect Spark and Cassandra together. Um, but for right. the very first time, we're including our own Spark connectivity layer inside of Datastax Enterprise. And there'll be, there's a number of benefits that, that are realized from this, but on the performance side, we are seeing a 3x now speed up with uh, basic queries against data that is stored in Cassandra and accessed uh, with Spark. So again, all of these features are things that in, in past releases, we may have thrown over the transom to the open source community, but now they're being retained uh, for Datastax Enterprise customers, and hence the focus, again, just on DSE itself. Right. Good. So there's a number of exciting things that, that you mentioned, or at least hinted at in there with respect to uh, performance improvements in a variety of areas, just the basic core database itself, first of all, um, on the order of 2x performance speeds, uh, speed boosts for that, as well as the you know increased performance for analytics. Um, we're going to be actually diving into that, hopefully quite a bit more in future episodes. Uh, looking to dig in with our engineering team and with our product management team on some of those specific improvements, things like thread per core and some of the byte order index improvements. So I'm, I'm excited. I, you know, we're not going to. Uh, preview or prehash all that right now but um, just you know it's for our, our viewers and listeners stay tuned we'll, we will be diving more into some of the technical details here of those things in future episodes um, so look for that coming up but I, I wanted to key in on uh, one of the things that you mentioned in particular as an emphasis on usability or simplicity that we're really really pushing hard toward with a lot of our products so can you expand on that a little bit more for me please Sure. So we're constantly uh, and naturally listening to what our customers need as well as what the community is saying in terms of the things that they would like to see uh, in Cassandra. And sometimes these these requests will deviate and, and sometimes they dovetail really well. And one of the areas that you'll see the community and enterprises agreeing on is the need to alleviate um, the issues that, that some uh, see in Cassandra repair operations. Um, yes. Year after year, when I run our product surveys and we do um, sampling, we find that uh, oftentimes people will struggle with repair operations, how to do it, how often to do it, et cetera. And if it's ignored, it can really threaten the viability of a, uh, of a Cassandra cluster. And so a couple of years ago, we introduced a repair service that was uh, deployed at the op center, DataSex op center level, which is our visual management monitoring solution. But it was handicapped in that it could only utilize the functionality that exists uh, existed at the Cassandra level. And so we did a few tweaks and, and we have customers that use it today, but it was still um, fell short of what we really wanted. And so with six, we're really proud to announce uh, DSC node sync, which is a server-based uh, set of functions that operate repair in a very transparent and an automatic fashion across a cluster, in effect alleviating the need for anyone to um, manually intervene and, and handle or deal with repair operations. So um, basically when you install six and enable node sync, you should not have to deal with repair operations uh, really again. And we've made it very, very flexible for people to use so that if you have a set of repair processes that you like, you can keep it, that's, that's fine. But if you want to, again, wash your hands of dealing with repair, you can enable node sync. It's done on a per table uh, basis, can be handled either via the CQL or visually through OpCenter and monitored through OpCenter. 
But the bottom line is here, we're really giving uh, our data sex enterprise users the ability to, to take a big piece of administration kind of overhead that they've you know carried for some time now and really just cast it aside. So that's one example. Um, another, which I'm really happy to see, is our new upgrade service. And so as a, as a DBA, there were two things that I absolutely dreaded. Um, I hated doing a point in, major point in time restore on a uh, critical database, scary thing. And secondly, I really hated doing upgrades, again, to a major system. Um, because you're always worried is something going to go wrong. You can practice it as much as you, you can on development systems, but you know there's always something that happens, it seems. So, um, and, and then take that, that angst that people feel and magnify it um, quite a few times when you're dealing with a distributed system that maybe has uh, sets of nodes running in all different parts of the world. Um, and it can be, again, a daunting task. And so this is where the upgrade service comes in. This is an automated system that helps people with patch upgrades. We're starting with patch upgrades to begin with, and then we'll tackle major upgrades next. But the idea here is to notify you if a particular upgrade or when a particular upgrade is available, and then download the software either onto the machines themselves or staging area. Um, apply the, the patch in a rolling restart fashion so you never go down. There's no uh, outages whatsoever uh, having to, to deal with um, where upgrading your system's concerned. And you can monitor it and, and handle it uh, all through Ops Center. So really happy to see upgrades uh, tackled in this fashion. Again, we start with patches, and then the, uh, the major upgrades will be coming next. But I think Node Sync and Upgrade Service will, will give you, a, I guess, a taste of the types of, of things we're looking to simplify where DSE is concerned. Excellent. So uh, also you mentioned this idea of um, the unification strategy of having a more unified product. Um, and I assume that that means in terms of the way that uh, the core Cassandra database integrates with Spark and integration with Search. And I know that the graph uh, the DSC graph makes uh, heavy usage of both search and analytics under the covers. So can you talk about how all these pieces are coming together more and more? I assume that that's what is happening under the hood. Sure. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, we've had, we have a lot of this functionality well integrated into the platform today, but we want to make it simpler uh, and easier to use and also just directly available with no thought given to enabling the functionality. And so as an example, with DSC Search, uh, DSC Search is uh, based on Apache Solar. We add quite a bit to it, uh, add, add additional value to it. Very, very powerful set of functionality, but it does require um, secondary configuration. There's the Solar API to deal with. Um, there are times when maybe you might want additional hardware resources to tackle the search workloads in addition to the transactional workloads that you do through Cassandra. And so where we're going with DSC Search and the, this unification objective is to really bake search into our distribution of Cassandra so that uh, when you start the database up, it is simply available from the get-go that instead of having to deal with multiple APIs, the Solar API and, and the Cassandra query language, CQL API, you're only dealing with one. You're only dealing with the CQL API. That is done in, or handled rather in a very efficient manner so that you don't need additional hardware resources and everything is much more efficient. Um, and in six, you, you see the, the beginnings of this. So we're, this is going to be something, the process is going to take us several releases to, to round out. But in six, what you see is us beginning to attack the API layer first, where we're introducing uh, much more support for search operations through CQL. And we're giving customers the syntax that, again, they're used to if they're coming from the relational world. So for example, right. in six, we're supporting the like command, mm -hmm. which, which people are very used to using uh, in, in relational databases. The like command um, done through the CQL API, but uses DSC search underneath the covers. And with subsequent releases, we'll be uh, developing that new engine, finishing everything up. Um, and so this is where, again, you're going from something that's, that's integrated and nice to something that's really unified and um, much more simpler to operate and, and develop against. So uh, it begins with DSE 6 um, with search. There's other areas, though, as well. So with DSE Analytics, you're seeing us now uh, provide support for unified uh, authentication. That's now in analytics. So security is being, um, again, unified throughout all of the various components of DataStacks Enterprise. And then lastly, 
it's not just at the server that we're we're uh, carrying this objective out. It's also at the client level. So our web-based developer tool, uh, DataStack Studio, today supports Graph. It supports Cassandra query language, working with Cassandra, and with Studio Six. Now we're delivering support for Spark SQL. So if you want to just write Spark SQL jobs without doing a lot of extra coding with Scholar or whatever else, you're going to be able to write that of those Spark SQL queries, fire it up against DSE analytics, be able to return your result sets much like you would in the relational world or Cassandra or whatever else, and look at the data. Um, so you're seeing us do this unification not only at the server level, but also unifying our developer tools. So no matter what you happen to be working with, whether it's analytics, search, graph, uh, transactional, you'll be able to handle all that through through Studio. Excellent, that is really exciting. Uh, you know, I'm uh, thinking back like some of the uh, rough edges that we're smoothing out across the product line and having a sort of an evening out of capabilities, like you mentioned, the security capabilities looking more and more the same across the platform. You know, having having less of my CQL statements that are search queries, having a, having to specifically reference that they're solar queries, and just being more and more straight, natural looking CQL. Um, these are all great improvements that I think are going to make life a lot easier in a lot of ways. So. Um, the one thing that uh, we talked about before that we really haven't dived into at all that, that I want to come back to is the cloud strategy. So with our DSE managed cloud, um, how is that impacted by the release of DSE 6? Sure. So we really believe that with version 6, um, we are delivering the leading distributed cloud database on the market and, and one that's really been designed from the ground up for hybrid cloud. Now that's a that's a loaded term. So I want to define what I mean by hybrid cloud. I'd sum it up this way. Uh, if a customer comes to us and say, will you support us on premise? Our answer is yes. Will you support us in the cloud? The answer is yes. Will you support us in multiple clouds? The answer is yes. Will you support us in, in, a, in a way where we may be using on premise and cloud together at the same time? Our answer is yes. So that's really how we define hybrid. On-premise, in the cloud, multi-cloud, we're there. We're able to deliver all of the functionality that you enjoy with DataStax Enterprise, no matter how you deploy. And so um, where our cloud strategy comes into play is with managed cloud, which what you've already talked about, DataStax managed cloud, that is our white glove service that is a true managed service and allows customers who have no desire to be in the database business, or at least don't want to deal with certain applications in their company, um, they, can, they can come to us and we will ensure upfront that we are supplying everything they need to choose the right hardware configuration, to get their data models right, which are two key areas uh, that you want to ensure um, that you get right for success with the platform. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we take care of everything, whether it is uh, provisioning, upgrades, backup restore, performance tuning, uh, we handle all that for them. And all of the functionality we have been discussing thus far will be available in, in DataStax Managed Cloud. Um, and so no matter, again, whether you're downloading and installing it yourself, whether you're running uh, DSE 6 in the cloud yourself, or whether you choose our managed service, you're going to be able to enjoy all the flexibility uh, of, of being able to deploy how you would like to and get all the benefits of, of DataStax Enterprise. And the other thing that I want to emphasize right now, we're seeing quite a bit of um, inquiries coming in from customers who are looking to have an alternative to being locked into a particular cloud provider. I mean, as you know, the, the various cloud providers offer uh, their uh, sets of databases, um, but they are exclusive to their particular cloud provider. So if a person goes all in on Amazon or Azure mm -hmm. or whatever else, um, there is a real fear there that it should these vendors increase prices or limit them in some certain way, they want a, a, a way of being able to control their own destiny, especially where their data is concerned. And that's what DataStax Enterprise delivers in the cloud. Um, we are cloud agnostic. You can run across all the different clouds we've talked about, as well as others like Oracle Cloud, um, 
and and not have to worry about being locked into a, a particular vendor and kind of ha have your data as it were held hostage so um, cloud is a very visible part of our strategy and i would say that again we are the leading uh, distributed cloud database because the foundation of the platform was built from the cloud uh, from the ground up rather with cloud in mind we are the only masterless architecture that is out there um, DynamoDB is not masterless. Cosmos DB is not masterless. And I can go on down the list, but we are. Right. And that's why we're able to deploy across the cloud and on premise with ease. Exactly. So, and yeah, that's a topic that we definitely dove into quite a bit with Jonathan Ellis when he was on the show. So, if anybody hasn't seen that, I encourage you to go back and, and take a look at that episode. Uh, he, he dissects that uh, and, and kind of that, that various cloud. Um, managed service competition that's out there in, in quite some detail. But uh, you did raise the term there that I want to pick on a little bit, which is this idea of lock-in. And, um, you know, lock-in is, an, is an, an issue that uh, people encounter not only in terms of locking in to a particular managed cloud provider, um, but we these are arguments that we also hear when we're talking with our customers. Um, I recall talking with one of our customers that was a, a DSC customer, but um, didn't really want to dig into using uh, some of the analytics features, um, right? They just wanted to stick to the DSC core because they, quote, didn't want to get locked in. So, I mean, this is a, an argument that we hear sometimes, and I, I want to give you the opportunity to respond to that. What's our, what's our thought process in terms of um, locking into DSC and people are concerned that they might not be able to go back to open source Cassandra or, or what have you? Sure. So uh, the first thing that I'll mention is realize that we always, in our development efforts, we're always pulling from open source Cassandra and, and building on top of that. So it's the proven foundation for everything that we do here. Um, and this means that if you're a current open source Cassandra user, you've built an application, um, but you're looking at DSE 6 and you're thinking, wow, I'd like to take advantage uh, of, of those particular benefits. Um, there's no heavy lifting involved whatsoever to now aim your application away from open source Cassandra and at Datastax Enterprise, because again, we're, we're using open source Cassandra underneath the covers. Um, and if, if you choose not to employ any of the particular enterprise components, such as our advanced security, um, analytics, search, et cetera, if at some point in time you're looking to maybe move back to open source, Again, that's not a heavy lifting option. Uh, if you're using our open source drivers, there's really no, uh, nothing that you really need to do. Again, as long as you haven't coded anything that, that use, uses our enterprise components, um, if you're using our Datastax enterprise drivers, there's just a couple single or a couple line code changes that you make and, and you're pretty much done. Um, you're also able to very easily move the data between clusters uh, utilizing Spark job or something else. But the bottom line is we always maintain compatibility with open source Cassandra, making it very simple for people to come from the open source world, deploy your applications on Datastax Enterprise with really no code changes whatsoever, and absolutely give you that safety net. Um, I, we think that once you get on Datastax Enterprise, you're not going to want to go back to open source and, and lose the performance gains and all of the other benefits that we've been talking about. But if you want the assurance that, no, I'm not going to be locked in, you have it. No, that's good. Yeah, and, and I would I would be very tempted myself to kind of dive into a defense of, you know, why the operational simplicity is gonna pay for itself. And we'll, we'll save that for our sales team to make those, uh, those arguments and, and make that case. But um, one of the things that, that I wanted to ask you about uh, is, uh, well, maybe not everyone knows that we have an early access program um, that we do, you know, trial out versions of uh, new releases as they're coming to market. So this is a pretty battle-tested release. Um, it's been put through its paces by some really significant major customers uh, in, in a very big way. So um, can you talk a little bit about what is the feedback that we are getting from some of these customers on DSC 6? What kind of experiences are they reporting? Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, we have uh, had an early adopter program that's been uh, in place for quite a while now, and I've been overseeing the one for version 6. And we're getting good feedback from customers that are talking about how, as an example with DSC Analytics, they found uh, the new 
unified security much easier to work with than they have in the past. Um, they're seeing the performance gains that we've talked about. They're enjoying the now simple way that you can load and unload data in a very uh, short order. Um, and the other objective that I really didn't mention earlier that you just briefly touched on is we have uh, kind of an internal objective called rock solid. And this is something that we've kind of carried forward for a while now. We want to make sure that no matter what, that when, when we hand over Datastax Enterprise, it is literally indestructible, that it is not going to fail you in production environments. And many people don't know the degree uh, to which we go to ensure that. As an example, we are the single largest tester of Apache Spark in the world. So um, we are the ones that do the thousand node tests on Amazon and on Google uh, Compute uh, Engine and ensure and ring out every kind of issue that, we, that, that may exist at scale so that our customers don't hit that. Uh, that's one of the benefits that you get with Datastax Enterprise is this production certification that, that no one else is going to provide. And that gives, again, a, a really a, a strong comfort uh, factor uh, to customers that they can de deploy with, with confidence uh, when they begin to use Datastax Enterprise for their critical applications. Excellent. Um, so one more question, if I can sneak in for you, um, but before you go, I know that we're running short on time. So, um, We've dropped an awful lot on people, and we are going to be talking quite a bit about DSC six uh, in the coming weeks, and you know, diving into some of the different aspects. But if we um, kind of lift up our eyes and look out a little bit further toward the horizon, um, what what do you see coming after DSC six? Uh, any any sort of sneak preview as to what we're thinking down the road? Well. Um the goal with all of the things that we've been talking about thus far is to ensure that, that we're not just delivering technology tweaks for technology's sake. Everything that we've been talking about has a real business purpose to it. So it's not just about giving you 2x or 4x performance gains. It's about you, the customer, being able to process more orders per second or handle more concurrent users at scale for your growing business or be able to, to handle more product lookups in, in your product catalog so that you're satisfying customers and they're not clicking away. Um, when it comes to simplicity, it's, it's all about increasing the, the, the customer's productivity so that they spend less time administering the system and more time working on business-related activities. Um, and so those are some of the, the more business-oriented goals that we look at for this release and also those that are going to be coming down the pike. And so you can expect to see us uh, attack uh, in all of these particular areas that we've been talking about, um, whether it is being able to be more resource efficient from the, the platform standpoint, whether it is to ensure that we are doing things like um, making uh, containerization with our platform, just very turnkey and, and simplistic. Um, those are the things that we've kind of set our sights on. But but the areas that I described earlier, the, the renewed emphasis on the commercial platform, the simplicity, unification, um, some of these things that we've been talking about are going to take a number of releases to get there. So for example, our next generation search, probably three, four releases we're looking at till we really have it polished and where we want it to be. Um, and so we're, we're excited about DSE 6. You know, it's, it's one of those things where uh, I've seen so many releases. I was, you know, here for DSE 1. Um, and I always think, you know, it's never going to, we're never going to top that release. And I feel that way about 6. But uh, when our next release comes out, I'll probably shake my head and think, I, I don't know how we did it, but we did it again. We topped that release. So uh, we're excited about six, but um, also really looking forward to some of the, the things that are on the short-term horizon as well. Well, I'm pretty excited uh, to you, as you could probably tell. So I uh, just want to express appreciation to you, Robin, for coming on the show and also just to your product team. I know that you guys absorb um, a ton of customer input and uh, really are out there seeking a lot of feedback and are very responsive to that. I feel like the product that we have put out there in DSC6 is really, I mean, it's driven by the customer. It's for our customers, and that's down to what you guys do. So, yeah. Thanks. Well, I can I can tell you that um, I again, as I said at the outset of this, I've been doing this for a lot of years, but um, 
I would absolutely say the product team that I work with today is the best that I, I have ever been a part of. And it is a real privilege to work alongside them and be a part of the team and see the innovative, creative ideas that they come up with that, again, solve real business problems. So uh, fantastic to, to, again, be a part of the crew. Well, we are looking forward uh, to bringing you back here at some point in the not too distant future to talk about DSC 7 or maybe even sooner should the occasion arise. So thanks for joining us and we will see you all next week on the next episode. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback. So go to the Distributed Data Show page on Datastax Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the Datastax Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.